Welcome to Finances and Banks versus Credit Unions with Kathy Pfefferhahn. Finances and, in conjunction with my company, Capital Coaching, helps people achieve their financial goals through personal, tailored, and attentive financial coaching services. Together, we create a successful financial plan by examining your spending and saving habits, then guiding and educating you to personal success. You can also purchase my workbook, Finances and Your Spending Planner Workbook, at lulu.com or click the link in the show notes. Thank you to all those who already have. Coaching services include evaluation of your spending plan, building your savings, and planning for your individual goals. Please contact me at capitalcoaching.net to make an appointment for your free consultation. Banks and credit unions differ in their ownership structure, customer focus, and profit distribution. Here are some of the main differences. The ownership. Basically, banks are for-profit institutions owned by shareholders. They aim to generate profits for their shareholders and often have a larger scale operation. Credit unions, on the other hand, are not-for-profit organizations owned by their members. Members of a credit union share a common bond, such as working for the same company or living in the same community. As owners, Members have a say in the credit union's decisions and elect their board of directors. Customer focus. Banks cater to a wide variety of customers, including individuals, businesses, and corporations. They often have a broader customer base and may offer a variety of services to meet different needs. Credit unions tend to have more community-oriented focus. They prioritize their members and often provide personalized services. Credit unions may have membership restrictions requiring individuals to meet specific criteria to join. The profit distributions are different also. Banks aim to maximize profits for their shareholders. They generate revenue through various fees, interest charges, and lending activities. Profits are typically distributed among shareholders in the form of dividends. Credit unions, as not-for-profit institutions, focus on providing benefits to their members. They aim to offer competitive rates and lower fees. Any surplus funds generated are reinvested back into the credit union to benefit the members in the form of lower loan rates, higher savings rates, or improved services. And finally, the regulations are different. Banks are regulated by federal and state agencies, such as the Office of Controller for Currency in the United States. They must comply with various regulatory requirements, including capital reserves, lending standards, and consumer protection laws. Credit unions are regulated by agencies like the National Credit Union Administration, and they also have regulatory requirements, but they may have more flexibility in certain areas due to their not-for-profit status. It's important to note that both banks and credit unions provide essential financial services. The choice between them often depends on individual needs, preferences, and the specific offerings in a particular area. Recently, I needed to cash some Series EE bonds, and I don't have a local bank, so I could not go into the branch to cash them. Then I remembered I had an account at a local credit union. That made me wonder, what are the differences between the two? Let's talk about banks first. They probably have an app that allows you to do online banking with general ease, and since banks do run for profit to make money for their investors, they offer a wider range of services to entice you to put your money in their company. These apps allow you to pay bills, transfer funds, make deposits from your phone, and even apply for loans. One benefit is you don't need to go to the bank to use many of the banking services. When you do need to go in for some reason with banks, you'll probably be able to find branches, brick-and-mortar buildings, that have ATMs throughout the region that you live in or even throughout the country. Using your bank's automatic teller machine will probably mean that you don't owe any fees for using them. Some banks have agreements with others and they will not charge you a fee, or other banks like mine will reimburse you for any ATM fees that I incur using anyone else's machines. There are many rules that banks are required to follow that surround their customer service, meaning that they have less flexibility in how they can provide services to you. Banks have reputations for poor customer service. Bankrate.com has a list of the top banks for customer service and how they ranked them. Their order from number six to number one are PNC Bank, Citibank, Ally Bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and at number one, J.P. Morgan Chase. You can check out this if you're looking for a new bank, but what I read about J.P. Morgan seems to have a large branch network 
an impressive mobile app, 24-7 phone support, and a lot of customer praise. Banks have many options for how you can bank your money, plan for your retirement, and investment choices. Banks' largest offerings are loans. Banks use the money you've deposited to loan it out to those who need loans, mortgages and short-term loans. This applies to individuals, companies, and even other countries. They can process nearly instantaneously, they can process nearly instantaneously both credit and debit cards, as well as the payments from complex regional, national, and international accounts. Not surprisingly, they want to make a profit, and they do that from its customers and those who invest in them. They make their money in what's called the spread. This is the difference between the interest rate they pay you for leaving your money in the bank and the amount they collect from lending your money out. The money you earn interest on, checking, savings, CDs, earn money because the bank lends out that money for mortgages, auto loans, and other personal loans. They may charge, let's use an example, of 5% interest to the borrower and pay you 2%, the lender. The difference is what they keep for profit. The banks earn, on average, 1% to 2% on their assets, and that's the money and the securities that they own. Opening a bank account is pretty straightforward. You'll need to prove who you are with a driver's license or government ID if you don't drive. They'll need your home address, social security number, birth date, and phone number. They'll need your social security number because they need to report any interest that you earn to the IRS. You'll then receive a 1099 INT, or it will be available online, for you to include in your earned income for the year. They will probably expect you to provide an initial deposit, but some don't so find out what your institution requires. NerdWallet.com has some bank ratings, fees, interest rates, and suggestions on closing an old account. Keep an eye out for banks that have no monthly fees, low or no overdraft fees, and that's where you'll pay a fee if you write a check for more than you have in your account, called a bounced check, and free access to ATMs. Anyone under 18 will need a co-owner on the account to be able to sign their legal documents. Credit unions, on the other hand, are nonprofit, owned by all the members of the credit union. There's a credit union national association, and they say that over 130 million of us belong to one. One benefit is that they want to keep costs low and interest rates high because they're not required to make a profit for members. Another big difference is that they have to limit their customer base. They do this by offering their services to specific groups. This could include the company where people work, a school, a place of worship, geographic region, or even belonging to a specific organization. Although you'll need to look for how you qualify, it's quite possible you'll find one that you do. Credit unions have interest rates that are higher on savings, CDs, and money market accounts than banks, and lower on rates that are offered for mortgages and car loans. And that's the reason that I have a credit union account. The fees tend to be lower than banks on bounced checks and other service charges. There could be no to low required balances for your account, which is nice if you need that or just want to keep the membership open. The mobile banking options may be limited with a credit union, so check out what offerings they have for online choices and that they will meet your needs. However, they may have financial education or other outreach programs that you can attend. Some have in-school credit union branches and special services for small business needs. Some credit unions are low-income designated. This means they offer services to people of all income levels, including those that are the underserved or unserved by traditional financial institutions. There are also low-income credit unions that have a majority of its members at 50.1% that earn less than 80% of the medium family income or earnings for the area they live in or the national metro area, whichever is greater. To see if you qualify, you can go on to mycreditunion.gov. Both of these two programs, low-income credit unions and low-income designated, offer access to accounts with low minimum balance requirements, small-dollar business loans, credit-building loans, small-dollar loans for individuals, loans for limited, negative, or no-credit history folks, and special services like money orders, frequent withdrawals, financial education, and other counseling. I read a story recently where a gentleman named Brian had a vehicle financed through his credit union, and then he bought a new vehicle. He researched terms, but they were not long enough, so he financed the vehicle through the dealer. 
After the credit union got the payoff check for the old loan, they called him and offered him a refinance on the new vehicle. They went out of their way to extend a longer-term financing program and to offer a 2% lower interest rate than the dealer. It saved him about $50 a month and $2,000 in interest charges over the life of the loan. Smaller organizations are willing to work to keep their members happy. It's well worth looking into a credit union. Both banks and credit unions have Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, insurance coverage for up to $250,000 of your deposited money, an independent agency created by Congress to maintain stability and public confidence in our nation's financial system. Banks and credit unions are both terrific for different reasons. Maybe you'll want to consider opening accounts in one of each. This is Kathy Pfefferhahn. Thanks for listening to Banks vs. Credit Unions. I know you chose to listen and I'm grateful. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow or subscribe for free in your podcast provider and share your favorite episodes with a friend like Sue does. I'd love you to leave a review because it brings financial education to others and helps people find me more easily. Also, let me know what questions you'd like answered or any topics you'd like covered by going to the website at financesand.net and leaving a message. You can also contact Capital Coaching for your personal financial needs at capitalcoaching.net. Remember, I went to school, so you don't have to. Finances and does not provide tax or legal advice, and nothing in this podcast is to be construed as such. Always consult a tax, accounting, or legal professional for advice on your specific situation. 